Hello, I'm Byungchul Park, working for LG Electronics. I'm gonna talk about what LockDev does and doesn't, and what we can improve. My interest is task scheduler and synchronization mechanism, including RCU and general locking mechanism. LockDev is a tool to check correctness of synchronization mechanism. Some checking is about lock usage correctness. Some checking is about RCU usage correctness. Some checking is about lock dependency correctness. Let's look at one by one. Lock and unlock must be used in pairs. This code try to terminate the task without releasing A which is problematic, so LockDev report it as a problem. This one is similar to the previous one. This code tried to return to user without releasing A, which is problematic as well. So LockDev would report it as a problem. Mutex lock shouldn't be acquired in a spin lock critical section. This code tried to acquire mutex lock B with spin lock A held, which is problematic, so LockDev would report it as a problem. Here, I will assume all you guys are familiar with lock usage. I will not explain lock usage in detail. Let me continue. Spin lock shouldn't be acquired in a raw spin lock critical section, which is similar to the previous one. This code tried to acquire spin lock B with raw spin lock A held, which is problematic, so lock depth reports it as a problem. Nest lock API should be called with the nest lock held. This code is correct lock usage. When you call spin lock nest API, you should specify nest lock. And we should have the next lock already held. But if somebody who is confused at using proper API use spin lock nest this way without nest lock held, then this code would be problematic, so LockDev report it as a problem. Okay, let's look at the next one, RCU usage correctness. RCU read forbidden context, for example, idle, shouldn't have RCU read sections. So, somebody who is confused at using RCU API try to specify RC read section like this in a RC read forbidden context, this code would be problematic. So lock that, report it as a problem. RCU dereference protected is supposed to be used with updater lock held. RCU just dereference is supposed to be used in RCU read section. So, depending on the context, we have to choose a proper one. In this case, not RCU dereference underscore protected, just RCU dereference should be used. If somebody use RCU dereference this way, it would be problematic, so LockDev would report it as a problem. RCU read APIs should be used in a section delimited by RCU read lock, RCU read unlock. List for each entry RCU is one of RCU read APIs. So the API should be used with in RCU read side section. But this code try to use the API out of read side section so 
this code would be problematic. Lockdown would report it as a problem. Let's look at the next one. Lock dependency correctness. All the lock acquisition order should be kept across the kernel code. In the left side of code, acquire the spin lock A and then try to acquire spin lock B while holding A. Right side of the code, acquire the spin lock B and then try to acquire spin lock A while holding B. The lock acquisition order between left side and right side is different, which is problematic, which lead to deadlock. So lock dev would report it as a problem. The same lock shouldn't be acquired twice in a single context. This code definitely problematic. So LockDev would report it as a problem. IRQ safe APIs should be used if the log is used in either process context or interrupt context like this. This is correct log usage. So if the spin lock A used either in interrupt context or process context like this, on the score IRQ API should be used like this. But if someone who is confused at using proper API use spin lock this way, then this code would lead this situation which is gonna be deadlock. So lock that report it as a problem. As we've seen so far, LockDev is quite a cool tool for checking these. What about this code? Do you think it's a problematic? Yes, this code is problematic because it goes to deadlock. Because wait for event B cannot be woken up because event B on the right side of the code cannot be triggered because mutex lock A on the right side of the code cannot be woken up because mutex unlock A on the left side of the code cannot be triggered because wait for event B on the left side of the code cannot be woken up. So this code lead deadlock. But because LockDev is working on Lock API, so LockDev cannot see the code colored red here. So LockDev would work with the code here. So it would consider this code safe. So LockDev will not report any problem. What makes the case missed? I need to explain how does LockDev track dependence first. LockDev defines dependence this way. If someone acquire lock A and try to lock B while holding A, LockDev says A depends on B. Let's look at this example code. Someone acquired spin lock A and then tried to acquire spin lock B while holding A. Then by the definition, we can generate a dependency A to B and add it to dependency graph like this. This code acquired spin lock B and then try to acquire spin lock A while holding B. By the definition, we can generate the dependency B to A and add to dependence graph like this. So using the graph, we can detect the circular dependence and we can report uh, the problem. 
In practice, the graph looks more complicated like this. If dependence y to q is generated and added to the graph, then we can detect the circular dependence so we can report the problem. Is a deadlock caused by incorrect log acquisition order? Partially yes, but more precisely, a deadlock is caused by waiters that cannot be woken up. In other words, a deadlock is caused by events that are not reachable. Deadlock detection tool should focus on weights and events themselves. So, instead of using the definition, I'd like to redefine the dependence this way. So, when event A occurrence depends on event B occurrence, I'd say A depends on B. This diagram shows why the new definition makes sense more. Event A cannot be triggered unless weight B is woken up. In other words, event B is triggered. So event A occurrence depends on event B occurrence. Let's look at this example code. This code is the one we already looked at which LockDev couldn't detect the problem, even though there is a deadlock. By the new definition, mutex unlock A occurrence depends on event B, so we can generate dependence A to B. This code, by the definition, I mean by the new definition, Event B depends on releasing A event. So by the new definition, we can generate dependency B to A like this. So with this graph, we can detect circular dependency and report it as a problem. Okay, let's look at all the examples that we already have been looking at. We have to see weight and event in its code. In this example, we have to see weight and event like this. In this example, we have to see weight and event like this. In this example, like this. Even in this example, we have to see weight and event like this. So, LockDev is a great tool for checking these two. Lock usage correctness, RCU usage correctness. But, LockDev is not the best tool for this purpose. Lock dependence correctness. So, I decided to develop a new tool named depth to replace the third part to deal with dependency in the best way. So depth is the best tool for this purpose. Depth detects situations where waiters cannot be woken up or depth detects situations where events are not reachable. That works with all types of weight. It supports multiple reports efficiently. It provides easy APIs to annotate weight and event. But it just started, so still has false positives. You can check LKML discussion with the first link and the source code with the second link. I'm looking for someone who are interested in improving this area of the kernel. Thank you.